when the sun goes down, you got to go to bed. But trying to get a little closer to that is going to help you when it comes to reducing belly fat when you are over 50. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hi, everybody, and welcome to your second 50. And if you're joining me on this episode, then you are in my first of a six-part series with the topic of how to reduce belly fat for men and women both when you are over 50, 60, 70 years old. Welcome everybody, I'm Judy Terrell and I am a certified health coach, personal trainer and weight loss and nutrition coach for the over 50 population. And I have been doing this work for 42 years. I am 60 years old myself and I have helped literally hundreds if not thousands of people in our demographic over 50 to lose specifically belly fat. All right, and that's what this series is about. It's a six part series and you have to put all six pieces together in order to see progress. And a lot of the clients who come to me with wanting to lose body fat, but specifically belly fat, when they're over 50, think there's you know certain foods that you need to avoid or certain foods that you should eat, and that be true, and I'm gonna address that in this series, but it is not the only thing. You could be doing those changes and not see results if you're not taking a comprehensive approach. Along those same lines, a lot of my clients who are over 50, especially women, think that when they put on body fat in their 50s and 60s post-menopause, they believe it is significantly or um, uh, the number one factor into contributing to it is estrogen and, and progesterone and the changes that they went through and that they're now destined to have this belly fat. But that is not the whole picture. Yes, there are changes that happen for females once they go through menopause that make you more susceptible to belly fat, but it also happens for men and they don't have the same hormonal changes. They have a more subtle change. So I'm here to tell you that yes, the hormone changes as both men and women go through their 50s and 60s contribute to more susceptibility to belly fat, but it doesn't mean that it's a fatalistic uh, situation. You do not have to put on belly fat once you're in menopause as a female or once you're over 60 or 55 years old as a male. All right. If you follow the tips that I'm giving you in this six part series, you will see significant decrease in the belly fat. And why do I say that? Because I've helped, like I said, hundreds of clients individually that I work with in my actual office to see those kind of results. And they're in their 50s and 60s and their 70s. All right. So there's my intro. Um, now let's dip into our, my first of the six things that are behavioral medicine that you need to do if you want to see that belly fat go down. Okay. Number one is you've got to get a better circadian, better titrating, better coordination with your own circadian rhythm and the circadian rhythm of the light and sleep. All right. So your sleep. So there are two main contributors to why fat's going to go to your belly when you're over 50 years old, all right? And those two contributors are cortisol, cortisol levels and insulin levels, all right? You've all heard those num these names before. When you had more estrogen as a female, as a younger woman, estrogen buffered some of the responses to cortisol and insulin that affect belly fat. As a male, you also have hormonal changes that are going on when, as you're aging, and those hormonal changes are affecting how cortisol and insulin are managed in your body. And that is why, as you're older, the, the, the fat will go to your belly more so than other parts of your body, all right, or more susceptibility, all right? So cortisol and insulin are the main perpetrators to belly fat. In this series, I'm going to address both. When I'm talking about sleep and what you need to do with your sleep patterns to reduce belly fat, I'm addressing the cortisol side of this equation, all right? To remind you, cortisol is a main stress hormone and it isn't a bad thing per se. We need cortisol to manage stress in everyday life. It's when cortisol becomes chronic. In other words, too high and too consistent that it starts to mess things up in our bodies, all right? So you don't want to have no cortisol, but most of us have too much cortisol due to a variety of stressors, all right? One of those stressors is, is 
in um, sufficient and non-satisfying, non-rejuvenating sleep patterns. I am so excited to announce your second 50 dot life. I have been working in the fitness industry with individuals, both men and women, over 50 years old for 42 years and really specialized in the last 10 on over 50. I'm over 50 myself by a long shot. And I've helped literally thousands of men and women both to lose the extra body fat that they gain in the second half of their life, to feel better in their own bodies energetically. Uh, I have helped people to reverse and eliminate health problems, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, pre-diabetes, um, symptoms of menopause, um, to name just a few. On this platform, you will have access to a entire body of resources, exercise videos, uh, mini courses, eating plans that are specially designed for over 50 men and women because there's special needs for our demographic. And in addition to the virtual resources that you'll have access to if you join at any time that you'd like, you also have access to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching through a, a group coach call every month. So you can bring your specifics and we can address those as you're also getting information that is specific to the over 50 population. 50s, 60s, 70s, and now 80s is the demographic that I'm working with. So it's your second 50 dot life, Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D, 50 dot life. Go check it out. It might be the, the single best thing that you've looked at like in your second 50s. All right. So fixing sleep patterns or your sleep hygiene that are causing your sleep to go off is one of the main things that you can do to minimize and then reduce belly fat, all right? So what am I talking about with sleep patterns, all right? Most of us as we're over 50 and 60, when we go off on our sleep patterns, one of two things is happening. We're either going to bed too late or we're prematurely waking up too early. When we go to bed too late, we're messing up the stages of sleep that have to do with physical rejuvenation. When we wake up prematurely and can't fall back to sleep, then we are messing around with the brain and the REM sleep and the rejuvenation and the compartmentalizing of our brains, all right, our cognitive functioning, all right? So both of those will cause stress if you are not getting those two, you know, good earlier sleep or good later sleep in the morning, not late, late in the morning, I'll clarify this in a minute, but the beginning phase of sleep and the end phases of sleep, all right? If you are off on one or both of those, then your cortisol levels are going to be thrown off. You are more susceptible to the cortisol levels being thrown off when you are in your 50s, 60s and beyond. And that is going to make your body um, put weight on in the belly, all right? so. When it comes to trying to reduce belly fat or control for belly fat, one of the main things that you can do is try to align your sleep patterns with the daylight hours, all right? So you have about one or two hours after the sun goes down to try and toggle your sleep hygiene so that you are getting to bed and going to sleep within a couple hours of darkness setting in, all right? So for most of us over 50, we're looking at trying to get to bed somewhere around 10 o'clock, maybe 11. Many of us are trying to stay up too late, all right? We're going to bed, social media, that's when we get on our social media at night and everyone talks about the blue lights. And yes, that will affect your sleep, but really more so than that, it's the fact that you're not sleeping, that you're doing something still, all right? And you're missing out on this major, um, the physical rejuvenation that happens predominantly in the deep sleep phase of sleep. And that is very, uh, it's, it's very rich in the, the 10 o'clock to one o'clock in the morning. All right. So if you're not sleeping at those hours, you're missing out on that. Your body is now going to have a higher level of cortisol. If you, that this is happening on a, on a regular basis, and that's going to contribute to belly fat. Now, the other way this happens with the sleep going off is if you wake up too early, let's say you have urinary issues as we all do, as we're getting older or, you know, hot heat management for females then wakes you up early and then you can't get back to sleep three or four o'clock in the morning right now you're not getting the REM sleep 
stages as as much as you would need and that is going to cause stress in your body higher levels of cortisol you're older you don't have the same level of other uh, hormones to help you to manage that i.e belly fat all right and this has really nothing to do with what you're eating per se that is going to be a factor but i'm going to address that in another episode in this series but um most people think if i just change my eating but then they're still off on their sleep then you're only going to get so far on your reduction of belly fat is the point I'm trying to make. All right. So for this episode, the number one of the six things I'm going to present for how do you reduce belly fat when you're over 50 and 60, and that is you need to get better sleep. Better sleep means getting a good amount of sleep between the, you know, getting in bed and trying to get sleep somewhere between 10 and one o'clock. Don't miss out on that phase and then trying to make sure that you're not waking up prematurely, like three or four in the morning, and then missing out on that phase, all right? So total hours of sleep are important, but I'm not addressing that right now, because what I'm trying to bring home to you on this episode, it's the, it's the quality of the sleep over the quantity. And if you're going to bed too late, let's say two in the morning, you could still be getting eight hours of sleep, but still be having a too high of a level of cortisol, because you're not getting that deep sleep stage and that is so necessary for body repair and rejuvenation. And that's going to cause a high level of cortisol, even though you might be getting eight hours. And the same thing on the other side. I have clients who go to bed at like eight o'clock at night, but then they wake up at three. All right. And then they're missing out on this other phase of sleep that they still could get in the REM, which is more prominent from, you know, the endings, like from three o'clock to six o'clock in the morning, say. Um, and then they have a high cortisol level and they are more susceptible to the belly fat. All right. So to summarize, if you want to reduce belly fat and you're over 50, one of the main things you can do is take a look at your sleep cycle and make sure that you're getting to sleep so that you're getting some of the earlier phases of sleep between 10 and one and that you're getting some of the later phases of sleep between three and six or even seven. All right. That will usually correspond with the daylight, the circadian rhythm of the earth. And when you're aligning with that, as close as possible, knowing that, you know, we have, you know, inside lights for a reason. We're not like primitive human beings where when the sun goes down, you got to go to bed. But trying to get a little closer to that is going to help you when it comes to reducing belly fat when you are over 50. All right, everybody, stay tuned. I have five more episodes in this series, all addressing elements that contribute to belly fat. And if you hit all five or uh, six of them, by the time the series is done, you're going to have a, you know, a very potent, you know, um, toolbox full of things that are necessary and you will see a difference in your belly fat. I promise you. All right. If you are enjoying the, uh, what I just told you and you're like, oh, that's very insightful. I think I want to follow her a little bit more. Then please, you know, listen to the outtake here. And there's a, I have a website I have on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, uh, YouTube. And I have a platform called Your Second 50, and you should really take a look at that because it's it's a resource, a, a plethora resource of information that is specific to us over 50, 60, and all the things that we are concerned about, health issues, weight management, um, staying physical and strong so that we're investing in our 80s, 90s, and beyond. So check those things out, everybody. Um, as always, thanks for following. If you're enjoying this, please like this uh, channel on YouTube and subscribe so you get notifications for my next series as it comes out and next episodes. And in the meantime, until I see you again, be well, make your second 50 even better than your first 50, and I'll see you in the next episode, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you'd like to have access to more of my resources, then you can reach me at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can go to my new platform at yoursecond50.life. That is Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D 50.life. Or at my website, www.judyterrell.com.